First of all, what are operators? Well, without operators, you simply wouldn't have a programming language. It wouldn't exist because you need operators. And when you start writing programs, and so when you look through your script at all the operators that you're using, you'll realize that without operators, a programming language becomes useless. It's futile. So what we're doing here is we are taking our human readable instructions. This is an instruction where we create a variable called name and we assign it a value. This is an instruction in a human readable format, but the computer can't read that and understand it. It needs to go through a JIT compiler or something of a kind. So you have AOT compilers, interpreters, and so forth, but that's not the point. With JavaScript, you have a JIT compiler, and that is a program that will read through like you would read a book and it executes your commands. It puts your commands together and it executes them. And that JIT compiler will convert it into machine code or bytecode that can be executed in the hardware. Now, we also have something called operators. You'll notice I said this is an assignment operator, but what is an operator? Well, an operator is a predefined function for the language. It's a function defined in the JIT compiler. It will read through your code, and when it reaches an operator, it will actually run a function. Now, what is a function? Well, you can call a function a subroutine or a subroutine a function, and we'll cover functions in detail later. But what in essence are they? Well, if a function is a subroutine, just think of it like a subroutine for you, making coffee in the morning. When you go downstairs and you wanna make a coffee, you have a subroutine. You put the water in the kettle, you boil the kettle, you pour the hot water in and so forth, and you go through all these things subliminally inside of your mind. Well, these things are pre-programmed inside of your mind. You can just do it naturally without thinking about it. Well, with the JIT compiler, it's actually got these operators predefined, ready to be executed in memory, and it can be run right in memory. So it's predefined functionality. It's a predefined subroutine, just like you going downstairs, performing an action like making a cup of coffee. Functions are verbs, they're actions, they're tasks that you can perform. Well, of course, an operator is a task, something you're asking the compiler to do. You're asking it to run a particular set of tasks to, let's say, create a box, give it a name, make sure that that box can have its value changed, and then also what we want to do is open that box up and we want to assign a new value. So this is what it is. This is actually a function. Operators are functions. And this is just one operator. We've just got the assignment operator here, but there are many other operators and you can have many operators in one statement. So what we need to do is understand there is an order of precedence to which your operators are executed, to which these functions are executed, which are the more important operators. So there's one type of operator, but if you actually search in Google, MDN, JavaScript operator precedence, this page will be the first link and you can scroll down and you can see a table of all of the operators that you can use inside of JavaScript. You also have the number which gives you the precedence. If it's a higher number, it means that that operator is going to be executed first before the other ones. And if it has a lower number, it carries a lesser precedence. So for example, you've got at the highest order, the parentheses or what's called the grouping operator. And then you can keep scrolling down and you'll notice that we have our assignment operator, which actually is very low right here. And you can see what it does is it's right to left, meaning it takes the value on the right and it assigns it to the value on the left. So that is actually what is happening right here. And by this table, we can identify what is going to run before others. And this is very important because you need to understand the order in which these operators will be executed. So if you go ahead and take a look at this, you have a mathematical expression, for example. So we have five plus two times three. Now, if you just read it like a book from left to right, you would get the wrong answer. So let's take a look at this. If I was to just read it like this, five plus two is going to be seven and then times three is 21. Let's go ahead and do this and you'll notice we actually get the answer 11 and that's because you don't read it left to right you understand that there is a precedence 
with these operators. We have two operators here. We have the multiplication and we also have the addition operators. And it's not just in the way that this is written, it's what operators take higher precedence get executed first, just like a calculator. And if you type this into a calculator, you'll still get 11. And so mathematicians know about this. There are a few different sayings for this, but we go with bod mass. And so this is how I remember the operators in a mathematical statement and the order in which they are executed. So first of all, you have brackets. So brackets could be the round brackets known as parentheses. They take the highest precedence. And if you take a look at the Mozilla Developer Network, look at it, look at this, the grouping, the parentheses right here have the highest precedence. Then you have what are known as powers. Now powers are actually a function call in JavaScript if you want to power a number times itself by itself so many times. So we'll look at this one. Powers is a function call and if you take a look at the developer centers table right here you can see that 18 there's the next one a function call there's the name of the function then you have the parentheses and then you pass in values. Now we'll talk more about functions later on, but that is the next order of precedence. Then after you have the powers, you also have division and multiplication. Division and multiplication share the same precedence right here. So if we scroll down, there it is, 14, multiplication and division. Whichever one comes first at that point, they both hold the same precedence. And then finally you have A and S for bod mass. A and S is addition and subtraction and there it is. Addition and subtraction carry the same precedence as one another. So it doesn't prefer executing one over the other. So let's go ahead and look at this, bod mass. So we don't have any brackets, we don't have any powers in this expression, we don't have any division, but we do have multiplication. While we know that multiplication has a higher precedence than addition, which is right here. So multiplication gets executed first. So two times three is six, and then you say plus five, which gives you 11, because the addition comes afterwards because it doesn't have a higher precedence. So that's why you get the answer 11 instead of reading it left to right. There is a precedence right here. And so that is understanding that these functions in one statement, you can have multiple operators and these functions or these operators are executed based on their precedence. So let's try a bit more of a complex expression and return that. And that expression returns the number 28. And I want to write out bod mass again in that order so I can see the order of the precedence. So what you have here is first of all you have the power. Now you can't actually write an exponent which is a base number and then you have the exponent in the JavaScript syntax directly. You have to invoke a function. So this is actually the powers right here and I don't want you to get too hung up on function calls at the moment. We will talk about functions later. But all we're doing is we're passing in the base number and then we're passing in the exponent. So the base number is two and then we tell the computer how many times we want to times the number by itself. So it's two times two times two times two. So it's two times itself four times. So two to the power of four. We have the division, we have multiplication, we have subtraction. We also have the grouping operator and then also we have the multiplication operator as well. So there is bod mass. Now we need to go through it. So first of all, are there any brackets? Well, yes, there are. There are these round brackets or parentheses, and you can see there's only one operator inside of them, which is the multiplication. So this gets done. Two times 12 is 24. Then we need to go to the next stage. Well, we've got powers. So with powers, you've got math.power right here. Two to the power of four, two times itself four times is 16. Then we need to go and look at any divisions. Well, the next one is division. So 16 divided by two is eight. Then we have multiplication. Well, there's no more multiplication left. So there's only these operators left. 
So what we need to do now is we have the addition and subtraction. Now addition and subtraction are on the same level. There's no precedence over the other. So we just read this left to right. So we have eight plus one is nine minus five is four. And then finally we say plus 24. So four plus 24 is 28. So when you follow this order, this bod mass precedence, if you will, and understanding how these operators are triggered, you understand how they work. So what you have is again, brackets, so they're parentheses, then you also have powers, division and multiplication again, division and multiplication are both on the same level, it doesn't prefer one over the other. It's just which one comes first and then addition and subtraction are on the same level. So in this case, we just carried on from there left to right. There was no precedence over the other. So that is actually what bod mass is. And there are the mathematical operators and it fits in with bod mass. And I believe there's also others as well called ped mass in America as well. They also have their own names, but it's the same type of thing. Parentheses, exponents, division, multiplication, and then addition and subtraction. Now, very quickly, I just want to talk about divide because you have two types of division. They both carry the same precedence, but what you have here is a regular division, which is just the forward slash. But you also have another type of division, which is actually a remainder divide or the remainder operator. It's also called modulus division as well. And this will actually just give you the remainder of the division. So for example, we have nine and we want to divide it by five. Well, we know that five can't divide into nine. So we're left with a remainder of four. It just provides us the remainder. So it just leaves us what's left over. And this is actually quite good for finding out odd and even numbers. For example, if it's an odd number and we try to modulus divide by two, well, we know that if any number can be divided by two, that it is an even number. Two is an even number and it goes into all the even numbers. So if we go ahead and return, we know we get a remainder of one. So this is an odd number. But if I was to say 10 modulus divide two, I know that 10 is an even number because two was able to divide that number up and there was nothing left over. There was nothing. And so that's it. So it's actually quite good for finding odd and even numbers. So we have the standard type of division, which will tell you how many times a number will fit into another number. And then also you have the modulus divide, which will just give you the remainder. It will tell you, I've tried to divide this number into this one. And if I couldn't fit or, and if I couldn't, and if I couldn't fully divide that number, then it will just give you whatever is left. So that is how it works. Now you know about operators are predefined functions in the JIT compiler. You know that operators have a certain precedence when they are executed and that's it.